Okay, so today I wanted to talk about the Z generation and the impact that they're having on pretty much everybody, the economy, the world, their parents, their colleagues, me, everybody. Uh, the reason this conversation has come about specifically is because at Dynamo at the moment, we've had a lot of interest. And when I say a lot of interest, we've had humongous interest from groups of people that want us to train their people, but the specific thing, the area of concern for them is that the majority of their people are under the age of 28, which makes them a Z-Gen, and they don't communicate well. And I don't have an answer for that. All I can say is that we can train them. And if you gave me somebody of the age of, say, 16 onwards, I could turn that person into a monster in success because the Z-Gens have a massive capacity and they're very, very well-skilled and well-versed around Intel. And knowledge is no longer power. It's absolutely no longer power. Knowledge is only power if you can communicate it. And that's the one thing that they've got. They've got the knowledge, but they can't communicate it. I'd almost go out to say that a Z-Gen would be ranked about one to two out of 10 when it comes to communication. And the average person should start life around three or four. So we're faced with people that are one or two and that as they go through the years, they're actually becoming one and negative one because the more these things move into place with AI, the worse they're becoming. And the reason why Z-Gens aren't great with communication is because they've been brought up with technology from probably day dot. Whereas most kids are brought up in a cot and they're sucking on their fingers and they've got rattles. These babies are now looking at screens from a very, very young age. So where most kids would be scratching their faces and stuff, they'd be pointing at a screen. This is why we're at where we're at. Now, it's not a bad thing. It's just the way things are. But never, ever in history have we had a generation of people that can't communicate like this. And it's it's great for business because we're going out there and we're actually training people to communicate and they're, and they're loving it. But uh, it is a big hole in the market. And um, today I wanted to introduce Chelsea Burden. And Chelsea Burden is uh, a part of the Dynamo team. She's She works in our marketing department in, in a big way. But she's also got a background in performing arts. She's an actor. And um, she's one of those Z-Gens that's sort of the one that's off the chart a bit, which can communicate. And she's had to learn how to communicate. And I just wanted to get her input and her feedback, her feedback and her insight into what she's faced with around her friends, her colleagues, um, the people that she's communicating with on a daily basis that, that seem to be different to her. So I wanted to get insight from a Z-Gen, directly from a Z-Gen, but from a Z-Gen that doesn't really have that problem as such, still can improve because they're in a generation where they're going to have to improve, right? But I wanted that insight. So I'd like to introduce you, Chelsea. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm good. I'm good, Chelsea. And um, I suppose with that introduction, that insight, it gave you a bit of an idea about where I'm heading with this conversation. And... Um, so what are you, what's, what's your feedback? What's your take on the Z-Gen? What is a Z-Gen? What does a Z-Gen think of a Z-Gen? I think we're a complicated bunch. We're a bunch that are very, very diverse and we rely a lot on technology. Pretty much everything we do now, what we want to do, how we have our spare time, everything is technologically based because we literally grew up always having it. And so I think things like our attention span are a lot shorter. We are more used to texting people rather than calling people. Even something as simple as calling the doctor can feel sometimes a little bit overwhelming because you're like, how do I how do I go about that? How do I talk to this person? Which one one sec, Chelsea. The reason why I'm interrupting is because I'm gonna actually take some notes, which is unlike a Z Gen. So a Z Gen would be listening to you intently taking like actually doing this. Mm. The problem with doing that is if I did that right now, I could be looking at my phone. So I'd just like to interrupt and tell you, I love what you're saying, but I just need to take some notes because I think it's valuable. Yeah, so I, I think it's interesting, but like even personally, I remember years ago being like, I don't want to call the doctor. And my mum literally happened to be like, you have to call the doctor. How else are you going to talk to them? <laughs> Which is such a simple, small thing. But in my brain, I just couldn't get my head around calling someone rather than texting somebody because I was so used to that being the form of communication. Even something like an email sometimes feels too long or it feels too formal where we're all used to this kind of quick communication of just 
sending an abbreviated text even, which is funny because even now my friends will send me abbreviations and I have zero idea what they mean anymore, which is... (laughs) So you mean an abbreviation of of a word or a sentence? Yeah, abbreviation of words is a lot of how people communicate now. And I can't keep up with them because they're constantly changing and people are making out their own ones. And I kind of just sit there and go, why? Just spell out the whole word. I'm so lost. Is that like SOS? Yeah. like That's what I use, yeah. What are some some other abbreviations? Uh, uh, Simple ones are like LOL, like laugh out loud. Um, Yeah. But then there's also like way longer ones, which are kind of almost like memes now because people are sending them and going, do you understand this? And I'm like, I just don't. But that's how a lot of people are now communicating. They're making their own abbreviations. They're just assuming you know what they mean. Or even simple things now as writing a, you know, a you instead of an actual writing out the whole word you or ah instead of writing out the whole word ah. People are just so used to doing things so quickly and sending them off that half the time they're not taking the time to read it properly or even understand what the person before them's actually asked them. Right. So it sounds like they're trying to make things quicker. Yeah, everything. It's a weird Quick. thing because everything now is so, our attention span now compared to like 10 years ago, 20 years ago, is yeah. so much better because of things like social media and TikTok and all those really quick attention span things. But that's the same with why people don't want to take a phone call or don't want to write a full length email because it just doesn't fit in with how they want to get things done. Yeah, well, the human brain prehistorically, and it will happen for the rest of our lives until we become robots, it takes four seconds to make a snap judgment. So basically, um, you know, with the with Z gen, obviously it's still going to take four seconds to make a snap judgment, whether you like someone, whether you dislike somebody or whether they're actually indifferent. Indifference, the worst thing you could do is where you don't even notice somebody. So the, the problem is with, with a Z gen is if you're having a conversation, you first meet a Z gen and they do this. Hi, how, how are you? And they're on, all of a sudden the brain's clicked off. And I think with a lot of what you're saying, cutting things back shorter, sometimes they're going to miss out on the detail. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I think in communication, when you, when you first meet somebody, you really got to focus on that detail. Like, what is their face doing? You know, like, I don't think Z gens look at faces that much. So, you know, many years ago. But I'm with them, or even if they are, like, they're texting, so they're not looking at somebody's face that way, are they? No. And a lot of people now are, are very, like, absorbed or worried almost about what they're saying or what they're doing. So sometimes they're not even taking in what the other person is saying. Because they're just so anxious and concerned about what's going on. So, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, when you look at uh, communication, which is w- what I think they lack, um, not not actually written communication, but when you look at communication, you know, 50, 55% of communication is physiology. So it's the way you actually look, hold yourself. And you know, at the moment, I could, I could close myself up and, and do something like that. And do this, and a Z gen wouldn't even realise that I'm not interested. They'd probably keep talking or keep writing, right? It's 55% of communication, and and tone, which is ah, uh, yeah, yeah, sounds that sounds interesting. That tone is me going. Not the Z gen wouldn't notice that, but words are seven percent of communication, and you know they they still can't master that. So I think if somebody like a Z gen, it's for somebody out there that that is a Z gen that's watching this potentially or, or an employer that has this sort of situation, what, um, given what I've just said in terms of those stats, physiology, tone, words, what would be your insight to a Z gen out there? Like what, what advantages could it, could, could it hold for them if they learned to communicate? What could it, what, what could it do for a Z gen? I think it's like, first of all, you need to figure out like what, how you communicate typically, like how, what is your style of communication? Do you, Do you care if you're slumped over? Like, is that how you typically sit and you don't even know? So many people don't even know how they talk or the little in like interests. Ah, can't even think of the word. Um, but like the little um things that make them them and how they communicate. I think that the first step is are their traits. Their traits. Yeah, their traits. They need to realize what they are first because I remember. Do they care though? Do they actually? They might. They might not. But then. It's realizing after that, okay, but what does that kind of communicate in a yeah. different way? Like if I have my legs crossed away from you, that might be seen as like 
not really paying attention to you because I'm, you know, I'm, I'm blocked this way. So I'm not really paying attention to you if you're on that side. Whereas if I'm facing you and I'm talking to you, that makes you immediately feel like I'm really interested in what you're saying. Um, same thing as like, if you have your arms crossed, right? That seems really defensive, but if you're open and you're talking, it, it doesn't feel that way. And yeah. so I remember, I remember going to drama school when I was really, really little and being taught the leg cross thing. And I was like, whoa, mind I'm blown. Like, I must always like notice that now for myself. And even now I notice it. And it's such a small little thing, but I remember learning it and being like, why do I not know this? Like, why is that something I'm not just aware of? Yeah, it's something that's you should be made aware of at a young age, just naturally. Yeah, but I remember learning and being like, oh, that makes so much more sense now. I never realized why when somebody was turned away from me or did something when I was talking to them, why I felt weird. And it wasn't even me. It was actually them and their body language having kind of a secondary effect on me. Mm. So... I think where we're, where we're at the moment is when, when we train a group of people at Dynamo, as you're aware of, we, you know, we, we get huge results and the results that we get are based around figures, numbers. The other base, the other results we get are around confidence. And what we're seeing, and, and our YouTube is testament to this. We've got so many videos of, of customers saying this, but especially the younger generation, they, they come out of the training saying, I'm so much more confident don't know what's happened, but I'm so much more confident. And the confidence is they're learning about themselves. And mm -hmm. what that is, is it's one of the five elements of emotional intelligence, which is the major cog of emotional intelligence, which is self-awareness. And it's a, it's a, it's a massive area. If you're not aware of yourself, it's very difficult to be aware of anybody else. Yeah. And it's a huge cog in emotional intelligence. And, you know, emotional intelligence is now about 80 to 90% of success. IQ which is, you know, IQ versus EQ is only about 10% now. So when it comes to success, a Z gen, if they're very low on the EQ side, but they've got this high IQ, we know now that IQs, when it comes to success, are only valuable up to a score of about 110. So Z gens have got IQs that are even higher that, but, but, but they're, they're wasting it because they can't, they're not self-aware. So you are lucky that at a young age, you, you did this at, at, at drama school. And you learned that, but obviously they're missing out on that. And then their parents are the culprits here, but their parents didn't know any better. They thought, well, they're having fun on here. Child's quiet. Another child not on this is not quiet. Thing, even now, see kids in their prams with their phones or people just giving them a phone because it's the easiest thing to do. And immediately it's like, ah, oh, but now that's what they feel is like their safe thing as well. Like yeah. it's also training kids that that is their... Like that's what calms them down. That's what makes them feel normal. And, you know, as soon as you, I, I live home now. And if I don't have my phone, I feel really off, which yeah. is weird because it's just, it's just a phone. It's not the biggest thing in the world, but we've grown up to feel like you must have it with you and you must have this communication. Even if half the time, you know, somebody will send me a message and I'm like, oh, I don't feel like responding to that right now. That's yeah. another thing. So often you receive a call or a text or an email, or whatever. And you're just stressed about your own self-response that you are like, oh, I can't deal with that right now. It's too stressful. Yeah. Well, that's the other, Definitely. that's the other thing that whole, what you just said then is too stressful. So that word there, I just want to find out, like focus on that for a sec. Um, this whole idea about this, this self-worth and, you know, I'm, I'm special. We are finding that, um, you know, there is an element of giving up, which is a lot e a lot more prevalent with the Z gens, and it's not because they're not resilient. Um, I mean, they they've got two arms, two legs, two eyes that they, they breathe and kick like everybody else. It's just that um, it's it's easy to opt out on a phone. So you know, if you don't like a response, you just go, "Oh, fine, I'll just move to something else." And I think that's the area of concern as well. It's not only can they not read people. Uh, or they're not in tune to go out and communicate. They're not practicing being able to be resilient with people. So if somebody, and you know, somebody's in a relationship, whether it's you know, it's a uh, it's an ongoing relationship or short relationship. If somebody's upset and they're pissed off, oh well, they're they're fine. I've scrapped them. I've deleted them. I'll go to another app. I'll go to another person. And that's the thing. It's so quick and easy now to be like, I just don't want to talk to them again. I just want yeah. to see them again. Whereas, you I'll know, take you, them off social uh, media. I'll yeah, take them off. 
You think about situations like school, for example. School is one of the best ways to like figure out how to deal with people and build that because you have to deal with them every single day. You don't get a choice. You have yeah. to see them. You have to deal with that. But, you know, you get into like we saw a lot of it in the um, in the COVID space because suddenly everyone was like, oh, I don't have to deal with them if I don't want to or I'm too stressed. I'm just going to turn my camera off or I'm just not going to go to that lecture or, you know, we saw so much of that kind of quick understanding shutdown barrier, being, yeah. which isn't necessarily helpful. It can be a hindrance than help. Exactly. And, and it causes friction, mm. unnecessary friction sometimes. And, you know, you can jump the gun sometimes if that, so that sort of friction. It causes heat waves. So yeah. Because suddenly you're so worried about yourself you can also project that onto other people. And so yeah. if someone gives you a response, you go, oh, they mean this in a bad way. And they might not. That might just be your own self kind of little bits of issues that you haven't dealt with coming back. That's right. It goes back to that self-awareness, doesn't it? I think the one thing that the Z gents don't do, another thing is they don't temperature check. They don't check in on themselves. They're just, they're continually moving forward, which is great if, yeah. if you want to get momentum to do things. But I mean, it's 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 a it's an area of concern, I, and look, it's not something that that I've brought to the forefront. It's something that our customers are bringing to the forefront, and like it's increasing week by week. Two two years ago, we were getting faced with, hey, listen, we've got you know a team of ten people. Three of them, they're they're, they're really skilled. They're really this is, we get this all the time. They're really smart. They're really skilled. They're really intelligent, but they just won't pick up the phone. And then guess what role they're in, Chelsea. What role? They're in phone selling, right? So they've gone and got jobs in phone selling, but they're they're they're, they're more in tune to texting people. So yeah. you know, there's people out there that think they'd be good on the phone, but then once they're in phone selling, they don't want to pick up the phone. So and and the other the other area of concern is, you know, leads coming through. The other area of concern that we're getting is, you know, with the Z gens, a lead will come through and the person will say. Oh, look, it sounds like it's too expensive. So, so the, the, the Z gen will go, okay, look, not a problem. Um, let, let us know in the future if you change your mind. So they'll just tap out because somebody's just said it's too expensive. It's too hard, right? So the, let's let's go to something that's a little bit more shinier. We'll go to a shinier ball, you know, or something that's a little bit more sparkle. So if there's all these elements. And the, the good news is, I mean, that's all not all doom and gloom. The good news is when they do these trainings, they come out of it. So they almost come out like Superman. They come out like, wow, I'm going to take on the world. I'm actually going to try all this stuff. So it's not like they don't want to do it. They don't understand the benefit until we show them the benefit. And it's an art form of what we do and how we do it. We, we get them to interact and they can see how much further they can get. So we want the Z gens to be able to buy a house in five or six years. We want the Z gens to move up the ranks at work. And, and buy a car and go on holidays and have nice things. But at the rate they're going, they, they, they're not going to have those things unless they learn to communicate. Because the only way they're going to connect with people, and let's face it, that's the majority of emotional intelligence. The only way they're going to connect is if they can actually communicate with somebody else so that when somebody walks away, the old adage is, you know, people don't remember what you do. They remember how you make them feel. And if you sit there with a the Z gen for a while, you may not feel anything. Right, so if that Z gen can connect, then you think, oh, like, wow. So the the big the big positive is if you've got a, a pool of say a hundred Z gens, and five of them know how to communicate, those five are going to go straight to the top of the cream, and that's what I'm 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 looking at instilling today. I think there's so many opportunities, you know, if we could just train all the Z gens in Australia, I reckon Australia will just move right ahead forward. So one so thing is that like. We are an intelligent generation, like naturally. Are. We are a generation that really, really is a little bit competitive and strives yes. to really achieve things. So I think once you kind of open that door, the possibility is also so much bigger because we are intelligent enough that if that's what we want to learn, we'll learn it. It's just that first step of realizing that we either should learn it or that we want to learn it. That's the biggest thing is realizing yeah. that it's important. Yeah, I think you're right there. It's it's a um it's a gifted generation in terms of that intelligence and the drive. Cuz you know, if you go back 20 years, you know, when when I was a, a young kid, back then like you know, at the age of 18 and stuff that you're not thinking about 
um, being a multi-millionaire. You're not thinking about having your own podcast show. You're not thinking about having your own brand label going out to the world because there was no, you know, there wasn't an opportunity with social media the way it is today. And kids today, like recently, we got approached by you know a, a, a kid that was about 16 years old. We we couldn't train him; he was too young. But he wanted to become a, you know like a top top ticket seller, you know, like a top salesperson and. That's great if you can get people like that. Whereas, you know, 20 years ago, kids were from 18, they'd go to school, they'd go to university, and they'd go around the world, have some time off, go and party. But now by the time, you know, the Z gens are 22, 23, they want to be super successful, right? And they've got, but they don't have the tools to do that because they can't connect. So there's a level of frustration there that we can help with. Yeah, definitely. Do you do you find, what about uh, your immediate friends do you find there's like some that you can connect with more than others or do you find that they find you a little bit different in the way you communicate um I think it was definitely something I figured out while growing up it's one of those things that you kind of figure out really quickly if somebody clicks with you and has the same communication style or doesn't and so sometimes people that don't have the same communication as me it's a little bit like pulling teeth because it's like, okay, I'm asking you a lot of questions. You're not giving yeah. me a lot back. Or it really, you just have to go, okay, my ego is aside. I'm just going to really focus on you. And then once you're comfy, then we'll have a proper conversation. Which is really weird. Like, I can recognize that in both sides of my friends now. I know who I can have a conversation with and, like, the conversation will not stop. It will be, like, quick fire. We're listening, but we're listening so quickly that it's just organic and really, really amazing yeah. to know what works there. And then there's other people that I know it's going to take me longer. doesn't mean I don't appreciate their opinion. Sometimes their opinions are so different than mine that I really, really value that. You value and that. No, I just know that it's going to take me longer to get there and it will a little bit be me putting my ego aside and going, okay, I really want to focus on you and your opinion and I'm willing to give it a little bit more time to foster that until you're comfortable enough for us to then go okay cool now what's happening what's your opinion now you feel comfy with me how can we have this conversation differently yeah just interesting like I can just tell the different communications between all my friends which aren't wrong and aren't bad they're just really really different different yeah but you can recognize the differences whereas other people can't and the problem with the Z gen is this if somebody is different, they, they may not accept that and they may not like that person for that difference. So funny because half the time those people that have opposite communication styles to me, their opinions, like I would be so much worse off had I not loved them. So you're not because, them. Yeah. because some of their opinions are so different or their ways of looking at life are so different that I can really, really learn a lot from them. Which yeah. is kind of it's important in my own self-growth and in understanding the world around me it's just recognizing that I sometimes need to take a bit more time and sit there and really figure out what they need from me as well like mm. what that intake is in a different situation yeah well it's it's look it's it's a combination of things isn't it like the, the scary thing for me I suppose obviously the great thing is we're, we're inundated at the moment we're, we're we're inundated at the moment so for us it's 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 great that we're busy with you know, customers wanting us to train their people and the Z gens and, and we're happy to do that and we're getting great results. The scary thing is, um, you know, like as you go through life, you should, you know, as I said earlier, you start off as a communication level two, then you get to three, then you get to four. And some people are really good. They get to eight or nine, but you know, people should be gradually moving up. But unfortunately with AI now and less conversations and less dialogue, things are becoming more monologue you know, more one way. And um, anybody that's a, that's a Z gen, that's a level three is probably going to level two and one, right? So it's, you know, for, for anybody out there that, you know, has these issues, we're, like we can help with this. Dynamo is, is certainly like happy to help with all this. But I think the first thing is today, Chelsea and I wanted to bring this to life so that people can recognize this to understand that, hey, maybe you recognize this or maybe you don't recognize this. But, you know, we've got you back and um, there's plenty of groups out there that, that now will probably go, now I think I know what, what's wrong. And if, we're, if we've made a bit of an impact on that, that are, that's great. That's what we've wanted today. We're going to probably wrap it up there, but I, I'd like to sort of pick up this conversation again at another date um, 
when we can look at some methodologies for Z-Gens and some other areas of concern around Z-Gens. But uh, I don't want to thank you today specifically, Chelsea, because it's it's hard to find a Z-Gen that understands this. And obviously you're working with Dynamo as well and you're working as an actor out there. So it's you're at the coalface. Um, but yeah, we for anybody out there, once again, that, that needs support, just drop us a line. Let us know um, if you've got concerns. We're happy to help. We're happy to you know just just give you some free advice if if, if that helps. Thanks, Chelsea, and uh, we'll see you next time. See you guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.